Hey, what's up everyone? So I wanted to make a video talking about some of the more popular class choices in ArcAge with the upcoming server open of ArcAge Classic. And since it'll be 1.0 and 3.0, a lot of the classes that were popular back in the day are most likely going to be popular again. So as everyone knows, or if you don't know, I want to talk about it a little bit. ArcAge's uh, class system is pretty different. You don't pick one class, you pick three trees, which ends up giving you a class name. So depending on the three type of trees you picked, you end up being categorized into either melee DPS, range DPS, magic DPS, healer, or an initiator. Those are the main uh, class types in ArcAge. So I want to talk a little bit about what the main trees in ArcAge are. Now, a main tree can be described as the first tree you pick that pretty much decides the playstyle that you're going to have. And in the game, when you first uh, make your character, you end up having to pick a main tree. And uh, I think I would include one more tree as a main tree, which would be occultism as well. But the three main trees are Battle Rage, Sorcery, and Archery. And actually on top of that as well, I would also include Vitalism as main tree. So technically five. There should be around five main trees that will pretty much dictate how your class plays, which the five once again is Battle Rage, Archery, Vitalism, Occultism, and Sorcery. So after that, you would pick what would be called a subtree. And these are really good secondary trees that really help your main tree out. And some of the subtrees will be pretty obvious. It'd be like something like defense. Shadow play would be one. You could also consider songcraft one. That's pretty much vitalism's staple subtree. And then after that, you would have what I like to call utility tree. And utility trees are things like CC, CC breaks, mobility, things like that. So the Utility trees, I would consider them things like Witchcraft, Oromancy. You could technically call Occultism and Songcraft a utility tree as well, depending on your other two trees. But that's pretty much the basis of Archage's class system. Now I want to go over and show some of the main classes that you'll probably see on opening day. And I'll also categorize them as a melee DPS, Range DPS, Magic DPS, Healer, and Initiator. So let's get into it. So the first class, to probably no one's surprise, is Dark Runner. Pretty much, and this is not going to be a tier list video or anything like that. This is in no specific order. This is just showing what, what classes you'll probably see and very good classes to pick when you're starting out. But Dark Runner is pretty much the king of all melee DPS classes. Great mobility, great damage, good tankiness, stealth as a mechanic, it's got everything. Now the next class is Shadowblade. Shadowblade is pretty similar to Dark Runner, except for the fact that it loses mobility in exchange for more CC with the Witchcraft Tree. Witchcraft Tree has very good CCs. It has fear, it has a stun, it's got a few other CCs that you would usually use as a mage DPS, but you can use it as a melee DPS. The next class would be Blade Dancer as a melee DPS. Blade Dancer is pretty good. It's not awful. It has the Songcraft Tree, which, uh, which uh, utilizes party buffs and self buffs. You get a defense buff, attack speed buff. You get some heal over time if you prefer to use that. It also has a stun in the tree with, uh, I think it was Dissonance, it was called. I'm trying to remember what the skill was called. Uh, ah, Startling Strain. That's the stun. Pretty good skill, not bad. And a pretty good uh, melee DPS class overall. Next you have a... Uh, you would consider it a melee DPS even though it has a defense tree. It's not quite an initiator. Quite frankly, there's only two really good initiator classes in this game, but Blighter is a pretty okay 
melee DPS class. It was pretty popular in the beginning of Arc Age, like when it first released, because nobody had any clue what they were doing. <laughs> so, defense is a very strong tree in the early game of Arc Age, since um, you have the skill called Redoubt. Gives you really good block, a really good block rate, and you can't be pushed or tripped. Extremely strong against melees, the defense tree. So if you're ever feeling a little bit weak towards melees, you can consider picking up the defense tree. But Blighter is a decent melee class overall. You also have Hexblade, which replaces the Shadow Blade uh, or Shadow Blade tree from Blighter with Witchcraft. Once again, replacing a uh, that sub tree with a utility tree and giving yourself some more CC and control. Not an awful class, more of a 1v1 class, not really a too seen in a open world PvP type of a situation, but a decent class nonetheless. And this class is an amazing class. It's a Argent. This is pretty much if you're deciding to go Dark Runner and you decide for some reason to go dual wield or any of the other melee classes that uses a battle rage in Oromancy or just really just battle rage in general if you pick short spirit you have access to this class since in uh, this version of arc age short spirit will have a uh, its healing power restored and this class is very strong in the mid to late game when library opens up because you can start farming the library bo bosses like win by yourself if when you whenever you get to that type of strength but uh, good mobility, self heals, battle rage tree, which is the best tree for all melee classes, hands down. Overall, pretty good class. I would highly suggest when you're uh, leveling up other trees to level up vitalism if you're already playing Dark Runner, and if for some reason you decide to be dual wield and have a short spear, definitely a good class to think about having as a as a little pocket option. Uh, the next class, uh, it's not really too played, but I put in here nonetheless because, I mean, it's a paladin. Everybody loves the name paladin. There will probably be some people playing paladin, and it's a not an awful class. It's pretty tanky. Has self heals, defense tree, battle rage tree for damage. Not an awful class. Also can be seen as a one v one kind of skirmish type class. So next is going to be the range DPS. Uh, primarily the uh, bow DPS. Uh, archers aren't ever really too strong in Arc Age. They're usually stronger at the beginning of the game, but they kind of fall off a little bit in the mid game. But they pick back up in the end game once you get like insane gear and stuff like that. But nonetheless, bow DPS is, or range DPS, is a pretty fun class. So the first one, and by far the most popular bow DPS, Primeval. It's got the mobility of a Dark Runner with the Shadow Play Armancy tree, but just uses the Archery tree. Very good at keeping distance, good sustained DPS. Skill Q will be in this version of Arc Age, so you don't have to worry about ping too much. Unless you have something like 300 ping, then that's like insane. But anything around, you know, high hundreds, 200s with skill Q, it's pretty fine. The endless arrows won't really be a problem in the archery tree with skill Q, thankfully. Now the next class, stone arrow. Once again, if you're feeling a bit squishy, just slap on the defense tree. Pretty much the solution to early game squishiness. Decent class, sacrifices mobility for pretty much readout, which gives you blocks. Uh, this class is really strong against melee, since uh, you also have access to Overwhelm and Shadow Smite to shackle and give you the trip. But other than that, this is more of a 1v1 small skirmish type of class. 
but uh it's definitely probably the second most popular archer class compared to or a little bit outshadowed by primeval because of mobility the next archery class would be trickster this is pretty much a specialized like 1v1 type of gladiator arena type of build seen quite a few of these queuing gladiators back in the 1.0 through 3.0 days of course archery is pretty much almost always paired with the shadow play tree due to free runner overwhelmment with stun backdrop mobility stealth so you'll always pretty much see an archer using archery and shadow play but picking up the witchcraft tree once again grants you some really good cc you get a stun you get a aoe fear not a bad class overall then you have ebon song you use archery shadow play and you uh pick up the utility of songcraft which is the songs for move speed defense attack speed and you have a little stun pretty decent class this is probably more used in like open world but this is probably an archer class that you would also see in arcade classic now this is a this would be considered a major DPS, but I want to start off with Revenant, because Revenant in the end game is technically an initiator class, or that's how pe most people play it. But in the start, it's kind of more of a definitely more of a just a regular mage DPS. But this class is probably the best mage DPS class, and later on it even becomes an initiator class, which is really strong. Uh, the Occultism Tree is pretty much made for initiating with the skill uh, Hellspear. You just throw up spikes around you and everyone's pierced, impaled in the air, can't move for a little bit. You have Crows to lower accuracy, really good skill. All around, Occultism Tree is just pretty much the king of like initiating. Uh, you pair with Oromancy to have your two teleports to get inside the fray real fast and then of course sor uh, sorcery is just your typical mage dps that's how you do all your damage but as mage dps goes this is probably the most popular one that you'll you'll see throughout the whole life of arcage and it's a very strong one as well next you have a very close uh, front runner for most popular mage DPS class, and that would be Enigmatist. Enigmatist has the uh, same mobility as a Dark Runner, same mobility as a Primeval, having the Shadow Play or Mancy Tree, with Free Runner having teleports. You have access to a really good combo, which is Leech, Deep Freeze, Meteor, and that's pretty much how you do the combo in that order. You have uh, access to Backdrop and Fireball, which lets you insta Fireball, really good, gives you some spacing. All that good stuff but this is a very good uh very very good 1v1 mage spec class and you'll probably be seeing these out in the open world in gladi arenas pretty much everywhere the next class we have is spell singer it's a very popular skirmish build to use in small scale pvp large scale pvp songcraft is a very good utility treat when you have a party or a raid since you give everyone buffs it also has a use of zeal which increases your crit rate pretty good class but it's uh once you get caught you're pretty much caught that's the only downside to this class but overall it's still a very good class to play especially if you're very good at positioning in the back you can get a nice uh big chunk of damage from meteor and god's whip it's really insane sometimes the next class i'm going to talk about is dagger spell for mage uh, this is pretty much a combo class. You're relying on your combo to insta nuke somebody, and after that, you're out of there. There's not really any constant DPS you're doing with this class. This is definitely a 1v1 Gladiator Arena class. You can use it, of course, in uh, small skirmishes or large scale if you wish to. But this is this class is definitely built for 1v1, and this is a very popular class. You'll probably see tons of mages playing in Gladiator Arena. All right, now we're on to the healers. Uh, not many, too many healer classes. There's pretty much a few that are really strong and popular. By far, the strongest one is absolutely cleric. But this is more strong around 
mid to end game, but nonetheless, you'll probably still see Cleric. It's very rare to see Vitalism not paired with Songcraft, so these two trees just synergize perfectly together. It's basically double support trees, you're giving your whole party buffs, you're healing them, etc, etc. You pair this with the Oromancy tree to have some get out of jail free cards with teleports. And also, um, you can also use like Leech if you wish. I don't see any clerics using Leech, really. But, uh, Ormancy, you take the health lift tree, or the health lift skill, sorry, to give your party uh, extra health. Pretty good skill, pretty good support skill. And you pretty much just take the teleports and shrug it off, and you're good to go. But overall, this is probably the most popular, um, most popular healer class that will be played. Next you have Caretaker, pretty close contender for popular healer class because once again defense tree in the beginning of the game, extremely strong, extremely strong tree in general because you get access to readout, that's just one of the best skills in the game. This is also, I would probably, if I was a healer, or if I had a healer in my group, I would definitely want them to play a Caretaker at the beginning of the game. And then they can always just switch to Cleric later in the game. And it's lifespan once you get more gear and stuff like that to sustain. Because Cleric is quite a bit squishy, but Caretaker definitely solves that problem with the defense tree. Giving access to more physical defense and redoubt, of course. But overall, very strong healer class. Very, very good. The next healer class is Confessor. This one's kind of a special healer class. This is more of a revive specialized class because you have access to stealth to cast revive. Like in Halcyona and stuff like that, if you have revive scrolls for some reason, you can be like on revive scroll duty or something like that. And of course you have access to revive in the vitalism tree, which you can also use. But this is just a very uh, niche type of build this is specifically used for reviving and things like that but it's pretty fun you got access to stealth you get free runner for a little bit of mobility you get backdrop of course vitalism songcraft tree not an awful healer class to play, to play and you'll probably see a few here and there especially during halcyona and things like that and finally for the last healer class you have not too popular of a class but you'll probably see it anyways templar Vitalism, Defense, Oromancy. You have the Mobility from Oromancy. You have, of course, the Defense from Defense Tree. Then you have the Heals from Vitalism. It's a decent class overall. Uh, it's probably the least popular out of the healer classes I've shown so far, but nonetheless, this is still a pretty decent healer class to play. And you'll probably see this a little bit. And that pretty much wraps up for the healer classes. And now on to the last classes. Really there should only be one class considered an initiator and it's the class you see on the screen right now, Skull Knight. But technically some claims can be made for the next class. I consider it more of just a hybrid melee DPS but it can be initiator as well. But let's talk about Skull Knight. This is the de facto this is the most insane initiator class in the game. You get access to Ormancy Tree to teleport in, Vicious Implosion to pull everybody in once you're in there, Hell Spear, you throw crows, you got Redoubt popped, so when you're backing up, can't really be hit. Just insanely strong initiator class. This is the initiator class if you plan on playing one. Sadly, it's technically a mage. So if you're not really into mages, it kind of sucks because really this is kind of the only de-initiator class. But if you're not into that, we have one more choice. And that choice is Abolisher. Abolisher, I would only consider an initiator class because it has Tiger Strike and a defense tree. It's kind of an initiation. Uh, you would take like lasso to single pull healers or high priority targets for your whole team to nuke them down. You got your teleports to get in there and initiate. It's an okay class, but in my opinion, this is a 
definitely, definitely just another melee DPS class. But I put in Initiator because at the beginning of the game, if you feel like playing melee and you want to initiate a fight, this is probably the class to play. So those are pretty much all the popular classes in Arcage. Pick them up, play them, see how you like them. Of course, I also encourage you to try out whatever your heart desires, since Arcage has technically like something like 200 classes. Pretty insane, the com amount of combinations you can make up. But these are pretty much the quote unquote meta classes. I wouldn't consider all of them a meta class, probably only like six of them meta. But the rest of them are also just pretty strong, solid choices to play, depending on what you're looking for. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like, leave a dislike, subscribe. Hope you guys have a great day. Take it easy. Peace out.